you, you have this dark demeanor. Do you ever just kind of wish sometimes you could go out and do some comedy stuff? Because I know you're a funny guy. You enjoy humor. Is there a little part of you that wishes you could go out and do a little bit of comedy? Yeah, sometimes. And, and I feel like there is a place for it, like where I can be myself, but also be humorous. I've had matches on the indies where we wrestled um, Rock Ness, which is Yuma and Kevin Martinson. And we wrestled them at Bar Wrestling and it was like fans bring the weapons match. There was all kinds of ridiculous shit that the fans brought. But someone just brought a banana and we did a slip on the banana spots. I ran the ropes and one of them threw the banana in. I slipped on it and stuff like that. It's not really taking yourself out of your gimmick or your personality you're just taking the piss out of yourself i think that's fun at times too yeah i definitely think that there's always more room to develop your character when you kind of set into wrestling was there like something that you really wanted to do like you know I, you were talking about earlier like you could go and be the big man and just do the clobber but you wanted to move more like a bam bam which i think you do i think you're you're, you're more like a, a Stan Hansen, Dick Murdoch, in my opinion, somewhere in between there. As far as like your own character goes, where are you drawing inspiration from? I mean, a lot of stuff is just like, it's from all over the place. It's from movies, it's from TV shows, from music. Obviously a lot of my imagery and stuff like that comes from, from music. Wrestling wise, I love Stan Hansen and Terry Gordy and those guys and trying to see how I can make, if a Dr. Just Steve Williams was wrestling in the modern era, what would he do? You know, I always like to say I'm trying to be Bruiser Brody or Stan Hansen in the year 2022 with like making everything a little bit more modern. You know, I think a lot of guys, a lot of stuff in the early 2000s Ring of Honor is what I draw a lot of inspiration from Claudio or Chris Hero or like, you know. A lot of those guys did unbelievable stuff for their size. Brody Lee was doing crazy stuff in Chikara. And even when he was coming back to AEW, obviously there's a, there's a fine line where you are doing too much and you're being too much smaller guys. But I think that that's part of the fun is finding the space where you can pull out a big high flying move or a crazy athletic move where people are like, whoa, what the fuck did he just do? Like if I do a topic on Hilo or a suicide dive or like something like that. Something that people aren't expecting. Wow. Do you, and you've kind of mentioned that there was a gap in your, your wrestling watching years. Do, do you have a guy that, that tells you go watch this map match? Maybe you can draw from, you know, this move here in, you know, 1981. Honestly, it's a lot of the time it's Andy Williams, the busher yeah. from yeah. every time I die uh, and, you know, AEW. From the second that I started wrestling, he gave me a list of like wrestlers to watch and like matches that I had to see. It was like, I think that you would be great at doing this. He's just like that to everybody. He, he you know, if he sees something and he's like a wrestling historian, he knows fucking everything and everybody. And like, he's been wrestling, he's been watching since he was a kid and he never stopped. And Lars, I don't know how, how many conversations you've had with Andy, but I feel like you guys could go on for hours about just everything from music to wrestling. But if he, if Andy sees that he saw something cool that he thinks that you can do or would fit in your wheelhouse, he's going to tell you about it. And I think that's one of the coolest things. It's something that a lot of wrestlers aren't willing to do is, is be, you know, willing to give out information and not just like hoard it for themselves. If they want to be more over than the other guy, when you're trying to make everybody better, I think that's when the product itself succeeds. I think that that's him, him and, and obviously Tommy, he sends me stuff all the time too. It's like, I think that this, this would be a cool move for you or like check out this match. And he watches like a lot of like real fighting, like UFC and like Thai boxing and stuff like that. So like, there'll be some like weird stuff that he saw that might, maybe he thinks that I could do or that he can do and like we kind of mesh it all together. On the top of, of Andy, what a lovely motherfucker and somebody that would probably could fit in the house of black at some <laughs> point. You know what I mean? You're a guy that in the grand scheme of wrestling history, you got to where you are pretty quickly. Do you still feel like you can always learn and you're always trying to learn? Where do you rank your talent level for how fast you are to where you are? I never try to think of it like that, but you know. Cause there's definitely times where it'll be dependent on the show. I went and did a 
a show for my school back in February. And obviously I'm like way further advanced than, you know, mostly anybody there. Cause a lot of them are still students at the time. I was able to give a lot of advice to those guys and have a match with somebody where I took the reins. I knew what that crowd would bite on and afterwards. He's like, wow, how did you know that they would come up for this part or that part? I'm like, dude, it's just like kind of repetition and knowing what is going to be placed where and how to get the proper reaction. Then when I go to somewhere like AEW, you're around CM Punk and Brian Danielson and John Moxley and Kenny Omega, all these guys that have done anything and everything there is to do in wrestling. I might as well be a young boy compared to those guys. I'm always trying to ask people for advice, ask people if they saw my match, if they think I could do anything better. And like, it feels good when they go, no, man, I think that was really awesome. Or if like they asked me why I did something and they thought it was really cool. That's really awesome too. I always just like to know what I can do better and like how I can improve. And I feel like a lot of guys are get, got, get kind of thrown off by it because, you know, I'll ask somebody that is probably like on my level. Hey man, what'd you think about that? What can I do better? What the fuck are you asking me? We're like doing this. We're at the same thing. I said, yeah, but like everyone has a different perspective. Everyone has a different mindset. And, and I like to know if you think Ethan page pulled me aside the other day and he was just like, Hey man, can I give you something? Yeah, of course. You, I, we've been friends for a long time. I was like, why are you even asking? Just tell me. But he was just like, I, I just don't want to offend you or anything. And then there was a spot where I gave pack like this big chop and it was just like thunderous. And then the crowd was asking for one more and then I did it. And it was just a dud. I already knew I fucking shouldn't have done the second one. The first one was enough. <laughs> He's like, you should have done that first chop and just like walk to the middle and just let the crowd react to it. And I was like, fuck, you're right. And it's like, just those little things. That's what I want to know. I don't ever want to know what I did good. I want to know what I did bad and like what I can improve on. So I think that, you know, I'm very much still, and always will be a student of the game.